Hi everyone, my name is Alex. So I work in technology with Justin and Dimitri. We actually create the tools for all the people that you've seen throughout the, the day, I guess. Uh, software and actually here, you're here at the camera capture stage. So we'll be giving you a few demos and a few things, but you know the basics here is that we use real world objects, such as this one, to control the motion of object inside Maya. Maya is the software we use to create almost everything here, so it's very complex. I've been working in Maya for about 10 years, and I'm still not sure I understand everything. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to you know, put some emphasis on the fact that this is really what this is about. You have a real object, tangible thing in your hands that controls something in the virtual world. Actually, I'd like to have a, you know, any volunteer. Uh, there you go. I just want to demonstrate why it's actually uh, an interesting technology and prove it to you. So you, do you know Maya? Do you know anything about Maya? Uh, yeah. I don't know. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, She's there you go. You're not actually, you know, can you go up and down? See, you, you're actually now controlling a camera here in Maya without actually knowing. So, for example, you can point this camera here at this monitor, and then you go, see, now you're, this camera here is pointing to this monitor. This is just a little box uh, that symbolizes the monitor. You can actually feel mine coming over here. And now the camera is moving with you, and you're pointing to this monitor here. So there you see, you don't need to have 10 years of uh, PhDs in math, <laughs> physics, and, so and a lot of things. You. you can actually uh, use this technology just and, and focus on what's important, the creative side. Here at Disney, we're actually striving to uh, having a, a really great mix between animators and, and, and engineers. It's a very important part of the uh, of the process. So, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, do you want to switch it back? Uh, so, reason number one as to why we do this is exactly this. We have directors and people who are more into the creative side. They have ideas, they have concept and things like that, but they don't know much about Maya. How do they communicate their ideas to? an army of hundreds of engineers, artists, and such. Well, a tool like this one is about this. You, instead of telling it more to the left, more to the right, more like this, more like that, just say, well, take it, show me what you want. Well, I want the camera to be here, here, or there, right? So just wanted to keep that in mind. Can you select the stage? Uh, there you go. So as you've seen, there's actually a camera, which is the one I'm controlling, and there's also a stage, uh, which allows us to uh, uh, scale what we're doing. So if we were in New York City or if we're in a car, there's a scaling factor. Every one of my steps is going to be a mile or two if I'm in New York City. It's going to be an inch or two if I'm inside a car. Right? So camera and stage. Uh, you mind switching to the next one? So here's actually a scene, uh, the scene that uh, Evan just showed you about Hero's Duty, uh, where you actually, uh, you can recognize this, the, the, the stage. Can you pre uh, press play? And see now the stage is actually moving on the bridge. And inside the stage, there's actually, uh, so it's a world. Can you, uh, you know, rotate around and show them the, the actual stage? So it's a, kind of like a theatrical stage. There's a, a lot of things in there, the bridge, uh, characters running, and such. Yeah, I just wanted to see that, you know, just give them an idea of the, you know, the size of this thing. And we're just going to be focusing on the bridge at this point. But as you've recognized from the previous uh, quick demo, the stage is the same. I'm still here, and I'm still controlling the same camera. So uh, can you actually uh, do the live camera now? Just and press play. So again, you can actually recognize the, the stage as the green thing here. But this time, actually, I am. Uh, there are live characters in there. So I am going to, there we go. All of this. And so that's another one of the uh, advantages of this technology. You can now, and if, actually I'll ask somebody else to, to come down here just to show you how easy it is. Uh, you can now follow, so there's an animation, characters have been animated, but actually play with the camera. So I'm gonna follow this guy here, and I'm gonna do this, and then stop, and then go to this one. So that's one choice I can make now. I just made it in two seconds. If you now come here, you can tell me, hey Alex, why don't you try this guy first, and then slowly move to this guy, like this. That's another choice you make. You can record that. You can do hundreds of takes, which we've done. Actually, in some sessions during one hour, we recorded several hundred takes. So the, again, one of the reasons is allowing people to not very technical to use it. The other one is just iteration. You can do many choices in one hour, and it's really fast, cost efficient, and also at, at the end of the day, you make more choices. You, you, as an artist, you can try hundreds of things instead of just one or two. So it's really, really big. 
if I could jump in for just a second. Sure. Basically, what Alice is saying is the movie making process is about making lots of decisions. You saw this big, expansive set. There's a lot of great stuff in there. But where's the best place to put the characters to tell the story in the best way? Once you decided where to put the characters and you've animated them, OK, what's the best way of revealing where they are? Do you start on the character and then you move out to the set? Do you start on the set and move back to the character? This system allows the people to come in as an artist, make those decisions, try a lot of iterations, and then take the one that worked the best, pass that down as the final output. So again, it's all about making lots of decisions really quickly. So I'm going to let somebody try the Actually, uh, yeah, I was about to the camera. volunteer just to, to help you with this. Certainly. I can get off the big top <laughs> It's yeah, so and just they can a bit. hit a record Oops. button, just and like it will record all the motion that they're doing. So they can play it back later, they can watch the date, they can even edit it. And you can After actually the fact just see that they didn't like one down. part of it, they and can go uh, in and refine just one section of that animation. And yeah, they sit here uh, for an hour or two, and they'll just do lots of takes, recording each oh, one of them, and they pick the one that they like the best at the end of the day. Maybe eventually there's a time during the presentation that records Oh, yeah, for them, yeah, absolutely. Feel free to take uh, pictures and recordings of, of the group and yourself. So one more thing I wanted to add. So the, the third reason why we use this stage in this technology, and let's say I'm the director, I've always wanted to be a director, and you will be my camera assistant. Okay. All right. Okay. Just a <laughs> fantasy of mine. Um, uh, so there are things that are really hard. I mean, you can do almost everything in, in a computer nowadays. I mean, it's just a matter of time and money, really. Uh, but there are things that are really easy to do in the real world. For example, if you wanted to follow these character and jiggle the camera so you just do this a little bit like and then you know just now we are following and running with him so this actually however easy it, it may sound takes a long time to do in a computer because you're trying to, to make it look like something real and on computer things tend to look like really you know fake it is just always going to be the same thing or you spend a long time actually doing something until it looks real here you just spend a few seconds you do this and uh, for example now we can focus if you don't mind, we can just, for, for example, focus on, uh, I don't know if there's another character. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's try it this way. Uh, now we're focusing on this guy. And same thing, you can just jiggle the camera, and now for, you know, we're running with him on the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason. You, there are things that are really easy to do in the real world, and, and this room is about that, using the right device to do the right thing. Not necessarily playing with fun toys all the time, although we really like it. <laughs> it's, it's about also just uh, having a, a, a tool that is right for the task. So with, for things like this, like the real life and real life uh, action cameras, those things are really, really uh, easy to use and very efficient. As Alex mentioned tools, we've talked about some of the hardware here, obviously the cameras that are tracking, uh, the camera that is being held there on the stage, but you see a lot of other stuff scattered around the room, and that's because uh, there are many tools for the cinematographer. Uh, we have a western dolly for shots that just have to do a nice pan across the scene. We have steady cam rays. We have any number of different types of cameras. Depending upon the kind of motion they want to achieve, uh, they are allowed to use any of these <coughs> to achieve it. All right. Anybody else wants to mend the I guess one of question. Oh, sure. So is this, would you consider an effect an added system after a thing is finished, then you come in and add this effect that's looking like it's a real camera shooting? No, actually, it's part of the movie uh, making uh, a process. Actually, the, the layout phase okay. is about choosing uh, the location of the camera, so the scout, and there's actually also the, the camera movements. So that's actually what is new. I mean, there and there's the polish, which happens later. But this uh, this stage in here is actually during the, ma the movie making process. The layout artist, instead of using their computer and mouse and keyboard, they come here and and uh, and do that. So it's really part of it. Yeah. But after the animators animate something, then yes, you come in that, and look at that animation from different angles and decide how to film it. Yes, well, that's the difference between live action. Here, in, uh, for feature films, we need to move the camera to something. Yeah. Because uh, you know, in a real set, you have an actor that is moving, so you can actually have the actor kind of do something, and then you, you choose the, uh, the, uh, the right point of view. So I'm going to jump back for just a second to the, this here. So this actually happens in both places. It happens before animation and it happens after animation. The layout artist will touch the scene two times. So here, this is not final animation. This is just the layout artist putting some rough notions in, some rough blocking. So here you see they're kind of very static. They're just doing some basic uh, blocking passes there. Then 
after we've laid it in, animators put all the full movement in, and then we come back a second time and do another pass of the camera. So there's an initial setup, which is what you see there, and then the final, which happens at the end. It's kind of a, a feedback loop almost. That when layout starts, it's it's about where do the actors come from, where is the initial placement, what is the general movement. The animators will then animate to that camera movement, knowing, okay, this is a side shot, I need to make sure the profile of my face looks good and the body looks good. And then afterwards, they're like, okay, but then the character did a little movement like this, so now I need to move the camera a little bit like that. So it really is a, a refinement process. Yeah, so there's nothing concrete and really based on ideas. At first, you need to have a, some, some rough estimate of what you're doing, and then you kind of refine it. Whether it's camera or animation, you start with some rough ideas, and then you just adapt to it. It's one of those things that's easy to forget in the virtual world. Is nothing exists until we put it there. Uh, it's not as though we come in and there are already actors there and there's already some form of set. Everything is created from scratch in an animated film. So the characters, we have to place them where they go. The cameras, we have to place those where they go. We have to build every piece of the set. So it's an important thing to remember is nothing exists until we put it there.